Mexico's new president-elect promises profound change for his country. How change could impact the United States, though, remains to be seen. Andres Manuel López Obrador's presidential win is part of a broader power shift in Mexico. His left-wing Morena party also won majorities in Mexico's Senate and lower house, unseating the long-ruling institutional revolutionary party, also known as PRI. To better understand how these victories will play out, we turn to Roberto Cepeda, a visiting scholar from the National University of Mexico with expertise in U.S.-Mexico relations. Basically, Andres Manuel uh, López Obrador is the leader of this party. I would say it's like a, a, a left-wing party, but not uh, very radical, more to the center, right? He's supporting free trade policies. He is supporting also a, a democratic uh, institutions. I don't see a radical change with, uh, with the uh, policies of this uh, party. He's not new to politics. This is, as a matter of fact, his third run for presidency. Why did he get elected this time? Yeah, probably the difference now is that people in Mexico is fed up of uh, corruption and violence. We have the highest levels of violence uh, in terms of uh, homicides, for example, and this probably uh, affected, right? Another factor is that crea he created, López Obrador, coalitions with uh, members of the PRI, of the PAN, and, and, and he created a wide coalition with unions also, uh, with different sectors, with a, a, a new uh, party, uh, which, was, which is also more like an evangelical uh, party. Mm -hmm. And then probably this coalition uh, was successful in his victory. Mr. Lopez Obrador has been very bold about how he feels about cartels, corrupt politicians. In the same breath, he's declining security. This is potentially a dangerous area for him to be treading into. Yes, I agree with you, Lorraine. I think uh, he to reconsider this decision. Uh, his advisors uh, are suggesting uh, he needs protection, right? Because we have to consider that during the course of the campaign, there were 130 murders. Uh, most of them uh, local uh, candidate for, for local candidates for local positions. Does he do this because he believes he has some level of respect with the cartels or is it because he, he's tired of seeing the same cycle repeat itself and he wants to change? Yeah, act actually he's trying to change the, the political uh, situation in Mexico, uh, but uh, uh, one of the things that he's proposing is like a amnesty for criminals, for, uh, well, I would say for uh, people in the, uh, like in, uh, they were forced to work, right, for the drug cartels, right? Mm -hmm. And he, and he's also uh, uh, trying to uh, ask the people or to call for, for the people to protect him. He, he has extended an olive branch to President Trump, and it appears their relationship is on a firm footing moving forward before he's inaugurated in December. That's a good signal. Yes, and then also, uh, the, uh, I would say that during the campaign, President Trump, uh, I didn't see any, any uh, that he criticized López Obrador. And then uh, he was one of the first uh, presidents who congratulated him by, uh, in a tweet. Right? Then they had a very long telephone conversation on Monday. Uh, of course, of course uh, it's, it's very early to say, uh, but I think this is a, a, a good beginning. Lopez Obrador, the president-elect of Mexico, he says he wants to work with Trump, with the United States, to, uh, to create uh, economic development, not only in Mexico, but also in Central America, in order to create uh, jobs and in that way to uh, reduce the migration flows to the United States. Arizona and Mexico share a very rich, strong trading, importing, exporting business. The hope is that it continues. Is that possible under this leadership? I think so, I think so. And uh, Lopez Obrador, as I said before, uh, his agenda includes uh, NAFTA, right? He don't, he don't want to withdraw from NAFTA. 
And also, he is open to, to new positions from the United States, to new proposals like these bilateral trade agreements. And, and I, I, I don't see a major change in the economic relations between Mexico and the United States during, uh, because of this political transition 